Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And it's Wednesday. That means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, usually, I'll talk about a certain comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. Steve Donahue over on his channel will talk about the same comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team-up that we do once a week, usually. And so today I feel terrible. But I felt terrible all day. But I, I couldn't miss Epic Comic Book Wednesday again because I missed it last week. So even though I'm feeling terrible today, Epic Comic Book Wednesday, the show must go on. The show must go on. Right, Roger? Roger totally agrees. So, it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Yay! So, yesterday, I, w I did go, I went to my doctor yesterday. Because I've been tired. And he, saw, he said, basically, gave me a bunch of blood tests and things. And he said, you know what, you need more sleep. And I'm like, great. Where's the sleep thing? When, when is the sleep thing supposed to happen? When? Anyway... He said I needed more sleep and that I needed my shingles vaccine because I'm old. Old people need shingles vaccine because shingles sucks. And a tetanus shot, which I was overdue for. So I got the shingles vaccine and the tetanus shot. And today I feel terrible. Which I assume has something to do with the shingles vaccine. Because I heard it could make you feel lousy. I had heard this, but disregarded it. But yes, I feel terrible today. But, like I said, Epic Comic Book Wednesday must go on. And today we are talking about something pretty awesome. Today we're talking about Conan the Barbarian Treasury Editions. Conan the Barbarian Treasury Editions. These are, these are awesome. Now, I only have two of these. There were, I believe... Four Conan the Barbarian Treasury Editions at least. There, there were at least four of them that I know of. But I only have two of them. What do you do? So, Treasury Editions were something that were, that were very common when I was a little kid. I, we had a lot of Treasury Editions, which were basically these really giant, oversized comic books. This, this thing is huge. And DC did their own version of it. And Marvel had a whole bunch. Marvel had Thor and Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. And at the time, in the 1970s, this is the first... Well, this is Marvel Treasury Edition number four, but this is the first one featuring Conan the Barbarian. And Conan, at the time, was one of Marvel's most popular characters. I mean, Conan sold, man. And so, yeah, they, they had a few of these Marvel Treasury Editions. And they were really cool because this is back in the olden days when there were no, you know, graphic novel compilations or comic book collections or anything like that, really. And so these things were cool because, you know, they're like 80 to 100 pages and oversized art. And you got multiple stories. And what Marvel would do is they would get some of the very famous stories or important stories, whatever the editors felt were the best stories, and they'd put them in the, in the Treasury Edition. And so this, is, this one right here is the first Conan the Barbarian Treasury Edition, a deluxe limited edition of the world's most savage hero. This has exclusively Barry Windsor Smith artwork in it. Barry Windsor Smith was the first artist to work on Conan the Barbarian. In that first issue of Conan, his artwork was weird. He had a style at that particular time that was kind of a mix of Jack Kirby and Steranko. It was 
it was interesting, but not nearly as amazing as what he later produced. And on Conan, you would, you could, if you read those issues, those early Conan issues, you could just see his artwork getting better and better and better. And the detail on the artwork just became amazing. And he developed his own style, which was really unique and just, it was great. Barry Windsor Smith probably isn't my favorite Conan artist. That's probably John Buscema. Uh, when I think of Conan, I think of, well, I think of this version of Conan. That guy right there. But still, I mean, look at this. Barry Windsor Smith was amazing. He was an amazing artist. And his run on Conan was incredible. And for this Treasury Edition, this one reprints... His, I think, the best thing he ever did on Conan, which was an adaption of Robert E. Howard's original story, Red Nails, which was the last Conan story that Robert E. Howard ever wrote in his lifetime. Now, when you open up this issue, you get a history, a informal history of the Thomas Smith Conan and Roy Thomas writes about his experiences with uh, working with Barry Windsor Smith and just the tremendous success they had on this book. Barry Windsor Smith left the book eventually. Well, he left a couple times. And when he left, John Buscema came on board. And Barry Windsor Smith wasn't on terribly long. He was on I forget how many issues he did of Conan. And then he came back, and for the black and white magazine Savage Tales, he did Red Nails, which was originally produced in black and white. The first story in here, be good, Rhonda. The first story in here is an excellent story, Rogues in the House. And Rogues in the House was re is reprinted from the color comic book. Conan the Barbarian. Rogues in the House was another story based on a Robert E. Howard Conan story. They do an excellent job, Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith, on this story. The artwork is great, but you'll notice if you, you know, if you do read these two stories, that as good as Barry Windsor Smith was on Rogues in the House, he got better by the time he did Red Nails. But still, I mean, the detail, the work, the detail work that he does in his stories was just incredible. The only problem was it took a long time to do. He, it took him time to produce work of, you know, this quality. And so there were occasions where, you know, the stories were late. There was at least one time that I remember where they had to do a reprint where they had to reprint an, reprint an earlier story. But it's fantastic. And one of the great things about these old treasury editions is just how huge the pages are. You know, when we were little kids, we used to spread these out on the floor and just lie down there and look at them. And I, I have really good memories of doing that with this. And just look at that. Just look at that. That's just... Fantastic. Anybody who has read Robert E. Howard's story, Rogues in the House, will remember this scene. And that guy there, Thack. It is Thack, right? It's Thack. And so Rogues in the House is a great story. It's a great Conan story. There are some changes made to the story, which... I can understand it. They, there was a scene in the original story where a bunch of people were gassed to death. And they took that out and they put in a scene where Fack fights a leopard. Is this a leopard? Yeah, a black leopard. Which, you know, was cool. Fack fighting a black leopard was cool before he fights Conan. So Rogues in the House was an excellent story. And I can understand why they reprinted it. And then in the very center of this, they have this beautiful map 
of the Hyborian Age. It's fantastic. But then we move on to a story that was originally published in Savage Tales number two and three. And it was originally published in black and white. I have found out from some comments that Red Nails has been republished a couple of times in color. Once by Marvel, I think, in the, was it in the 80s? And once by Dark Horse. Although Dark Horse recolored it in their own weird way. Apparently Dark Horse's color was weird. But this version that you'll find in this edition was colored by Barry Windsor Smith himself. And just look at the, the detail work and the, just, I mean, just look at that. That's beautiful. I think that this is the best, by far, that Barry Windsor Smith ever did on Conan. That could just be me, but it just looks fantastic. And this is Conan Trails, uh, the pirate warrior Valeria. And there are some differences in the comic book version from the comic book version and the uh, original Robert E. Howard version. For some reason in the comic book version, Conan is even more lecherous in the comic book than he is in the original Robert E. Howard stories. <laughs> like in this one, he he's pretty much trails Valeria and he's like, what's he say here? I want you woman and I have not come this far just to turn around and ride off empty handed. So be sensible wench. I'm not going to harm you. And then she pulls out her sword. Now, this is not something that Conan said in the original Red Nails written by Robert E. Howard. This was added. This was added by Roy Thomas. And I'm wondering why he did. Why make Conan even more lecherous than he normally is? And I think it's because it was the 70s. And one thing I remember about the 70s is that everybody was obsessed with sex for some reason. And so it's it's not a surprise that Conan is this way. But, you know, he did, you know, he did follow her because, you know, he admired Valeria. But she puts him in his place, Valeria does. And they fight a, di they fight a dinosaur, which is really cool. They fight a Stegosaurus, which is a carnivore in the Hyborian Age. It's a Stegosaurus that wants to eat people. That's how it was in the Hyborian Age, I guess. And we get some great artwork there, but the, the real cool thing that happens in Red Nails is when they find a city, a walled city on the plains. And it turns out that this walled city is actually one gigantic building that's the size of a city. It's all roofed. And inside this, these dark, shadowy corridors are some survivors or some... Uh, there are some people living here. They're not the original occupants of the city. But on one side of the city, you've got some people. And on the other side of the city, you've got some other people. And they're fighting each other. And they're just trying to wipe each other out. And Conan and Valeria team up with one side just because, you know, they offer them gold. And it's a great story. It's a great story. One of the best Conan stories, I think. And this version of Red Nails, I don't think will ever be surpassed. There is another version of Red Nails that was done in the comic book, The Sumerian, which is, I think, a French Conan comic book. Conan is in the public, a lot of his stories are in the public domain. So you, you can have a Conan comic book and, you know, do your own Conan stories, but you just can't put Conan on the cover on, as a title. So they call their comic book The Sumerian, and they have a version of Red Nails, but I haven't read it yet. But from what I've seen, it's not as good as Barry Windsor Smith's Red Nails. This comic book is another Treasury edition. This one from 1977. This is issue number 15 of the Treasury Edition. So there, there have been a few of these. Actually, the Treasury Edition that I remember best and that I read to death 
was Star Wars. Star Wars, the Star Wars movie adaption came out in two, like in two treasury editions. And then eventually they put it all in one. But I, I had the, the two treasury editions with the original Star Wars movie adapt adaptation in it. And it was fantastic. I read that thing over and over and over and over again. But this Conan one is awesome too, because this one has Red Sonia in it. And this has, if I'm remembering right, this starts off with Barry Smith. And I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, this is the last story that Barry Windsor Smith did for the regular color comic book. And it's fantastic. I mean, look at Red Sonia there, dancing around on the table, having a good time. Uh, the artwork, of course, is amazing. I mean, just look at this one shot of Conan. Valeria, not Valeria, Red Sonia just whipped off her chainmail, and Conan's like, yes. And what a great, great illustration of, once again, Lecherous Conan. As he tries to make the moves on Red Sonia, but, you know, she's not having it either. He doesn't have much luck. Conan with the warrior. It's the mailman. It's the mailman. It's the mailman. He's bringing mail. You don't have to freak out. Excuse my terrible dog. Anyway, it's amazing. But after that, we get something really cool. And this one. And this next one was... Another story that was originally in Savage Tales, I believe, although I don't remember which issue of Savage Tales this was. I think it might have been issue four or five. And this is Night of the Dark God. And this is based on a Robert E. Howard story that is not a Conan story. And Roy Thomas took this story that wasn't a Conan story and made it into a Conan story, which is, you know, something that was done quite often in the paperback books of the time. El Sprague de Camp was doing this all the time. In this case, it works rather well. Gil Kane is the artist, and Gil Kane just does an incredible job on this story. But the inkers are Neil Adams, pa Pablo Marcos, and Vince Coletta. So you have all those guys, super talented in their own right, doing the inking. And so you have just an incredible story that just looks fantastic. Again, this was originally published in black and white, and this is the first time it was printed in color. I think Marie Severin did the coloring on this, although I could be wrong. Look at that, just look at that. That's just an amazing, amazing picture. What an amazing illustration. Gil Kane was just remarkable. Uh, for action. He was just so good at drawing action scenes. And he was just, he was just great. And I mean, just, he has these big battle scenes going on in this story. And in this story, Conan is trying to rescue a young Sumerian woman who was kidnapped. And there she is, there. And it's just, it's just a great story. The original story by Robert E. Howard, The Dark Man, was an excellent story. And like I said, it actually works pretty well as a Conan story. Now the last thing in here, well, we have the Sonya pinups. And those are amazing because again, oversized and just looking fantastic. I rather like Red Sonya. And I, I've always liked her chainmail bikini. I've always. I've always liked that look. And so here is the last story. This is from Savage Sword of Conan, I believe, was when was where this was originally published. In black and white originally, this is Black Colossus. And the artwork in this is by Big John Buscema. Alfred Akala is the uh, inker. And Roy Thomas wrote it. And it says... Sev colorist, and I think that's Marie Severn, although I could be wrong, could be wrong. But 
these Savage Sword of Conan stories just had this wonderful level of detail in the artwork. Something that Big John Buscemo wasn't thrilled with. But it looks fantastic. And the story, actually, again, this is another story based on a Robert E. Howard story. Black Colossus. And it looks great. It looks great. Again, there were some changes made to the story. But nothing major. Nothing major. And I just think it looks fantastic. This particular... I mean, look at this. This is Conan was just a mercenary, but he's been put in charge of the army. And he has this fantastic artwork. I mean, artwork, armor. He has this fantastic armor on. And he just looks awesome. Look at him. He's so cool. Conan. And this is his first command, basically. This is the first time he's commanding an army. And boy, do they do a great job. Boy, do they do, do a great job on this story. Because um, there's a lot going on that they have to draw. I mean, armies and monsters and all kinds of stuff. And it just looks incredible. These are fun. These are just fun little relics from a lost time in the 1970s. And because of their odd size... And because small children like myself read them literally to death, very often when you'll find these, they're not in the best shape in the world. These are not in the best shape in the world because I literally have read each one of these, I don't even know how many times over the years. And I still have them and I keep them. Behind Roger over here is a music cabinet where sheet music goes. And it's a perfect place to put your tre it's a perfect place to put your treasury editions in with the sheet music because of the size of the things. It fits right in the sheet music cabinet. Helpful tip. I'll shut up now. I am very tired. I'm very, very tired. And so I'm going to stop talking before I pass out. And I will catch you next time.